Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy. And I'm going to address um, annual spreads. So, of course most people have already done their annual spreads. And I'm a little late. I'm a little, what is this, the 6th of January. But I still wanted to do this <laughs> because um, as I was poking around looking for different things and um, you know, I often do an annual type of spread on my birthday as well as at the first of the year. And the reason I was poking around looking for alternatives is because I do intend to do, um, for as each sign comes around, probably not starting till Aries, I'm thinking at this point, but as each sign comes around, doing a set of readings that I will be offering PDF or ebook or something like that. So I was. I'm still kind of formulating exactly what I want to do with those, um, which is why you know probably won't be till you know Aries time there that I won't be prepared to really be putting out um, what it is I want to put out. And so one of the places I was looking was in Barbara Moore, Moore's tarot spreads. And she's got a couple that could be adapted as an annual spread, one that I think is intended to be an annual spread. Now what we normally do, and will be included in the, the readings that I will be doing, is, you know, for every month you choose a card. And many people will layer that. Um, I like to do one card, just general vibes, and I use three different decks for this. so. For each month, I do uh, general, just a card, general vibes. And then I do one card for career, and then I do one card for love or relationships. Um, <clears throat> so, and I've already done that, and I tend to do that. I know a lot of people like um, the Celtic Cross. I've, I've never particularly liked the Celtic Cross, but... So many people might rely on that and do kind of an annual Celtic cross. So the first one I'm going to talk about here in Moore's book, she calls it a journey spread. And it's not intended to be an annual spread. It's intended for when you are wanting to move away from something. Um, like if you're needing to leave your job or wanting to leave your job. If you um, are leaving a relationship, if you're moving away from relatives or just moving away, um, feeling that need to be in a, in a completely different environment. So it's kind of sussing out some reasons for that and, and what you might encounter as you do that. So it needs to be modified a little bit. I'm looking here trying to think. I think... Um, I'll use, I think I'm going to use the Voyager Tarot because it tends to give some very direct messages. And we'll go through this. Um, but let me tell you, and I'm not going to write it in the information box below the video because I, you know, I'll say it here. If you want to write it down, you can write it down. Um, otherwise, I feel like it gets a little bit into, I don't know if you call it, it's copyright infringement, I suppose you'd call it. Um, and I am going to modify it, but the first three are cards about leaving. So it says these three cards tell what you are leaving behind. And I think that's a cool year-end sort of an assessment to look at. What are you leaving behind? Um, and to pull three cards for that. Um, and then card number four is a Y card. Um, in, in hers, it's why are you being uh, called to embark on this journey at this time. That obviously does not apply to the end of a year, which is just, it's part of the wheel of time, right? Um, or your birthday, you know, it's just there. And so I am going to change this why to kind of what, what in the coming year would be kind of your prime motivator. Um, something that's going to help you push you forward, you know, an internal pushing forward. And then five is your star. 
and she says here, like the bit of star in the hermit's uh, lantern, this is what is guiding or leading you on your journey. Um, and so that I think I could, I could keep. You know, what is a star? For me, this is like, partly because I get so many ideas, I can get off course. Um, and so what, what should you hold as your guiding star throughout the year? Six is a challenge, a challenge you're likely to face in the coming year. And number seven is a destination, a card that shows what you are moving toward. So to me, this would be like at the end of next year, what, what is that likely to look like? Okay, what is that likely to look like? Um, it isn't even so much what I'm moving toward. I feel like that's that's a combination of what I'm moving toward and events beyond my control, wherever I'm at at the end of this year. So for those who don't want to stick around for me experimenting and trying each of these spreads, I will talk about the next spread as well. And I'm very curious to hear of anybody else's. Um, if you have a video about year-end spreads or spreads for marking your birthday and what your coming year will look like, uh, feel free to put a link in a comment below. I would be curious to see those right now because I am in this investigating and planning stage. Um, and, you know, anybody else who just has some sort of you know, if you just pull one card or you pull three cards, I would just be really interested to hear what you like to do for um, your year end. I know um, a lot of people who follow the Pagan Path, they will do a Wheel of the Year. Is that what it is? Wheel of the Year spread? Um, something like that. All right, so the other spread is way, and these are all way in the back of her book. Um, is a really interesting one. And this is, this is kind of funny. It's past the conclusion, past the annotated. It's Curious Old Spreads, Appendix A. Curious Old Spreads. And so this is called the Prediction Spread. It is actually 15 cards. So the prediction spread, what cards one, two, and three represent the Quarant's present environment. Um, cards four, five, and six represent the elements of the Quarant's question. Uh, so that would maybe need to be modified or not, not necessarily. If we're, if we're looking at the year ahead, that could be um, elements in the coming year. Um, and then 7, 8, and 9 are obstacles to be surmounted. 10, 11, and 12 are suggestions of what will come to us unbidden. And I, I really like that. What is going to come to us unbidden? I mean, it could be good, it could be bad. But um, 13, 14, and 15, these indicate what the querent can expect to achieve. So really, all of these make sense kind of except for represent the elements of the querence question. And again, you could say elements of the coming coming year. Or since it's 15 cards, take those three out. <laughs> There's no reason that it needs to be 15 cards. Um, and of course, it, if it's going for a year, a 12-month period, it makes more sense for it to be 12 cards anyway. Um, but I will do that with the 15 and just see what comes. Now, so for the journey spread, and again, kind of for the sake of fast, direct messages, I know I was talking about maybe using the um, Circle of Life tarot for that, for this, but I think, you know, again, for, for the sake of speed and trying these out, I'm going to maybe go with something more direct. Who are my direct cards? The Voyager can often kind of has, they have noisy images because they're collages, but the message on them is often very direct. I suppose I could just use a 
write a little Rider Waite Smith since we are most people are very familiar with it. I could also do an Oracle deck like the Enchanted Map. We'll see. So the journey spread, I'm going to go ahead and use the Voyager Tarot that I'm shuffling now. I'm not sure that I can do a split. This, this deck ends up being so thick. Oh, not bad. And we'll see what comes of it. I should have shuffled my decks, decided on my decks before I got the camera rolling here. I can look and read at the same time. I'm just going to put these out here. All right. Number one, one through three, things I'm leaving behind in the coming year. Things I'm leaving behind in the coming year. Do I feel like this needs to come out. Do I want the one on the top or do I want this? And I don't. So those are one, two, and three. Um, prime mover or prime motivator for the coming year. I feel like this is about internal motivation. All right, I'll take you. Um, star. What is going to be my guiding star for the year? To get my little twig out of here. What is my guiding star for the year? Maybe I don't have a guiding star for the year. Most definitely don't want to come. It's probably one that's already out. Maybe something I'm leaving behind is my guiding star. You're going to be my guiding star whether you like it or not. Okay. Challenge. Well, I felt like I was feeling through a bunch of challenges there. Challenge. This is my challenge. Um, and then destination. Where will I be at the end of 2018? Where am I headed at the end of 2018? All right. I've got this mess of cards here. All right. Now she has it in a, you know, a funky arrangement here, or is this her, her arrangement of the cards, which just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Except it's kind of twisty-windy, which is the way life is, right? Journeys are often twisty-windy. Um, so, whoops, I had that right. Okay, so, things I'm leaving behind. I, oh no, I'm leaving behind equilibrium and reward. And being a seer, uh-oh, so I'm leaving some things behind here. Well, I'm certainly not going to completely leave behind being a seer, even if I'm not posting on YouTube as much. Um, it's, the reward is really interesting. Maybe it's, I'm going to leave behind seeking reward um, for my, in other words, you know, as you all know, I've had, um, if you've been with my channel at any, for any length of time, you know, I've had a fitful um, <clears throat> time here with monetizing various things. So, um, but it's interesting, too, that leaving a, behind equilibrium. Maybe I'm going to have a difficult year. Leaving behind equilibrium and reward. Um, I was going to say, I haven't seen a lot of Oh, I can see some of this. I could see some of this. 
um, in terms of wanting to write about opinions and doing things like that, that is leaving behind equilibrium, certainly. Um, I'm not sure what rewards I'm leaving behind. I'm already in kind of a financially compromised state, so I don't care to be leaving behind any more rewards. But, um, but there we go. Interesting. All right. So four is motivator for the year. Internal. Oh, that's interesting. Aspiration. Um, so just sort of, and it's got hands, it's got the Washington Monument, it's got the Statue of Liberty, it's just got another, it's got a fist up there. So it's reaching for things, reaching higher goals. Hmm. And this would be, I believe, the Four of Wands traditionally. All right, very interesting. Um, the star. The star is the guiding light sensor, which is interesting because they have seer, leaving behind seer, but embracing the sensor. Now, to me, in this card, the sensor almost has a shamanic and is still very... Um, it's, an, it's a card about intuition. I'll show it to you. You see, you've got the black. It's supposed to be the Queen of Wands. You've got you know, those long fingernails, and you've got that headdress, there is all supposed to be a matter of tuning in, tuning into everything around you, tuning into your intuition. So it's a little bit of a different take on the Queen of Wands. All right. Um, so this is my star. My guiding light. It's great to have that as a guiding light. Challenge that I will face. Sorrow. Hmm. Sorrow. I think this is the Five of Cups traditionally. So having to deal with sorrow and letting things, you know, let, I think letting things go. And then the last one. At the end of 2018, I will be at strength. Because this takes the old, so that the, um, the, uh, there's always this the strength justice reversal. So this is 11, but it's strength in this deck. So, um, and with that, you know, with the challenge being sorrow, and then where I'm going to end up at the end of 2018, I'm guessing that on this card, you've got the lion, and then you've got a darker. It's like the courage, what that dark side, that mask that you're overcoming. I could see that being overcoming sorrow. And mastering, mastering that sorrow. How interesting. So, yeah, I would recommend this. I find this an interesting spread to reflect on. So, let me gather this up, and I will do the other one. And I'm still kind of undecided what deck I'll use. So, I'll do like this. And I'll record that somewhere. I have to go through this. I don't usually read these ones reverse, so I have to go through and put them upright. All right. So for the prediction spread, I guess I decided I would just use 
a Rider Waite Smith deck. I don't know, it feels kind of dodgy. I'm going to get out the enchanted map. I want a little enchanted map in my year. love this deck and I just have not been using it very much recently. So we'll use it for this prediction spread. I just shifted. It says that this prediction spread is from a book called The Tarot, published by Rice, R-E-I-S-S, -S, Games in 1972. So it's not really an old spread. In some of these, too, she goes through these elaborate... Um, shuffling routines. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm just going to... And these work so well this way. Except I want all of the cards. I need to start. Alright. So cards 1, 2, and 3 are the Quarant's present environment. Sure. I'll do the ones that are standing right out. 1, 2, and... Three, present and fire. And four, five, and six are elements of the querence question. So it would be elements of the coming year. I'm just going to do four, five. Four, five, and six. I'm just going to let them be. They're suggesting themselves there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine will be obstacles to be surmounted. Obstacles to be surmounted. Seven, eight, nine. lined up here. 7, 8, and 9. Um, 10, 11, and 12 are suggestions. No, what will come. All right, so this is what will come to the querent unbidden. 10, 11, and 12. What will come to the querent unbidden? This one. This one. And this one. This is what comes to the querent unbidden. And then the last three, 13, 14, and 15, these indicate what the querent can expect to achieve. And this one. And this one. All right. And this one. So, well, we don't have that here. All right. One of the interesting things she says here is, is whether, you know, where the Nine of Cups turns up if you're using the traditional tarot um, will indicate whether something will come true, something will come to you or happen for you or something. Nine of Cups being the wish card, of course. Okay. 
me put these back up here in piles. Alrighty. So number uh, one, two, and three. Corinth's present environment. Gentle gardener. Heal the ouch. And one ring circus. So I can see that gentle gardener, um, you know, kind of <laughs> tending my card garden, <laughs> trying to get all of my papers out of the way. I'm less, um, you know, and feeling the ouch. Well, there's always my health, but also um, I feel like I'm at the end. I hope I'm at the end of um, working on a certain animal that I took in, um, and One Ring Circus is a lot of my life being a single and independent person. Um, but I do get from the Gentle Gardener and the Healing the Ouch, to me that's like, it's less living things tending of living things, although I have too many animals right now, as it is tending my environment. I'm definitely in the process still um, of tending my environment, kind of getting things organized and cleared up and cleared out. So, um, elements uh, of the Quirin's question. So, elements of the coming year. Oh, is that lovely? I got the flying cards flying up over the maze, all right. Um, the dry desert, which I can take. Some people see that in the guidebook, sees it as a negative card. But to me, there's, a, there's just kind of that open space where you can breathe. Desert is also an excellent place to view the stars. Um, Uh-oh. But also the dragon's lair. So, I might be going into a dragon's lair, or I might continue to tame my own dragon's lair, meaning my own home. So these are aspects of the coming year, I would say. And then, um, 7, 8, and 9 indicate obstacles to be surmounted. Uh, compass, having a sense of direction. Um, solitude, probably my love of solitude, <laughs> needs to be overcome. Um, and sacred pool, probably finding a sacred pool, finding a place, um, finding a way to refresh and replenish myself, I think is, I don't know that it's an obstacle, but it's a challenge that I need, I need to pay more attention to it. And I think with the solitude being also a challenge that I need to do something other than simply solitude. Um, and the sacred pool is outside. It's not in a position of isolation. Um, next, 10, 11, and 12, this is what will come to me unbidden talisman, the golden palace, and protecting treasure. These are some curious things coming to me unbidden. Um, the talisman will be about knowing, like I might get intuition about um, what path to take and that sort of thing. The golden palace is often seen as um, a negative as in uh, kind of building glass houses kind of idea where you're reaching after something that doesn't have a good foundation. Um, but whenever I see this, I don't see that negative, maybe because it looks so much like the Taj Mahal. Um, and because what's working on it in the underneath is trees. So trees and roots. And in the guidebook it tends to say that these trees or roots are undermining 
the building that it's on, but I almost see it as the building is resting on roots. Um, so I, don't, I just have a hard time looking at this card and seeing negative things. Um, yeah. I'm getting this sense, um, actually, of something almost like a tradition or structure um, from, like, roots from the past. Maybe something very... conventional is the word I'm looking for. Maybe something... Some, something very conventional will come to me. Maybe something to do with government. I don't know. Um, and then protecting treasure. I'm not showing you all of these cards just because of the time. Which kind of speaks for itself. Um, and is a, a lovely thing. So, in other words unbidden, my treasure will be protected. I, you know, that I, that's a blessing that I have during this year. And the last three is um, what the Quirant can expect to achieve. The Bone Collector, very interesting. Um, the Wizard of Awareness, very interesting. And um, Stuck in the Mud. <laughs> um, the reason the Bone Collector and the Wizard of Awareness together are interesting to me is because, to me, they are sort of part of the major arcana of the um, of the Enchanted Map deck here as kind of two key figures. I can't remember what the guidebook says about the Bone Collector, but she always strikes me as somebody who is, um, I think they say she's some, the keeper of your past, you know, so I can, I can expect to um, maybe preserve what is important to me and let the rest go. I can see that as an, as an achievement. Um, she is also a fairly shamanic figure there. Um, I was starting to get that mediumship thing again, but I'm, I don't know. I'm still not real interested in going in that direction. Um, I don't feel like I have a particularly natural gift for it um, by any means. And then the Wizard of Awareness is um, a person who is able to look at things objectively without getting caught up in I would say the emotional ups and downs of what's going on. So I, can, I really welcome that. Um, partly because of the political situation in the United States. It's like, ah, oh, maybe by the end of 2018 then I'll be able to distance myself. And, and really I am fairly distanced from it, but to, um, you know, kind of stand back and ruminate and just distance myself a little bit more. <laughs> Stuck in the mud! I'm not sure. I guess I won't be breaking, even though I've got the flying card here. I'm not sure I'll be breaking free entirely. I could see this in terms of something that I achieve. If you look at it, the, that elephant has created a pattern for itself. It has created a track for itself in the mud. So, and, you know, granted... You know, 
I always say with that card, you know, if I get it for somebody in a general reading, I say keep in mind that you are a powerful elephant and you, if you created that pattern, you can just as easily step out of it. Um, but since this is something that I'm supposed to be achieving, then, you know, maybe the achieving is actually creating that pattern, that circle, that cycle, um, which would be good for me, actually. And that it has been created to the extent here that it's fairly easy for that elephant to stay in that pattern. And, again, because of my health challenges, I would actually welcome something like that. And a good groove, getting in the groove. Doesn't need to be a stuck, but just getting in a good groove would be a very happy. And it's interesting that in th that has circles, and it actually has circles within circles. You might be difficult to have seen. The Wizard of Awareness also has, has actually spirals. And there's a circle around the head of the bone collector, and she's standing in a circle. So there's all of this circularity going on, um, at least in the things that are achieved. So I like it. I'm into it. I think I will preserve those. I think I'll put them on my little 3x5 cards, and um, I'll have them in my collection to pull from next year for year-end um, spread ideas. I'm not sure that I'll use them for the zodiac sign readings that I do, because I have so much else that I want to accomplish with them. I'm not sure that I'll use these with them, but it was fun giving them a try. And I hope it gives others some ideas for various things they might do at the beginning of the year or again on your birthday. These are fun things to do on your birthday as well. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.